Yeah, good evening everyone, good afternoon, we're, you're all very welcome to another Zoom call here with the LGFA, it's Jackie again and uh, we're taking a very special trip down memory lane this afternoon, I'm very very pleased to be joined by sisters Marguerite and Assumpta Cullen who represented the Shelmelier Club in uh, Wexford with some distinction and also have some inter-county experience under their belts as well. And the reason we wanted to get the ladies on today is that we have a very, very special piece of footage that we came across in recent times, uh, which dates back to the mid-1980s. Uh, and the ladies I'm about to talk to uh, feature in this piece of footage. So I'm going to show it first. I'm going to get the screen up here. Ladies, so bear with me now, and um, we're going to have a little bit of fun first. We're going to play this, <laughs> and uh, we'll get your reactions then after that. So here we go. Oh, definitely, if not more so, to put more training into it than the planet anyway. If we say we train at 7 o'clock, we guarantee that everybody will turn up the attendance beforehand, train for, ten, for two hours, and then head. And how often would you, would you train? Um, <clears throat> every night during the summer, they're all, they're all there. Um, either um, matches, come on, we go for a um, Every night of the week? Every night of the week. Seven nights a week? Yeah. Seven days. Seven and Sundays, last, last night, during the day and summer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. what, what about you, Sumter? When did you start? Um, yeah. And what have you done since then? All the practices. Do you train very hard? <laughs> you played on an, on an under 18 team, I gather, at one point. How did that happen? I got the first after the first And were you there? Were you all turned out? Were you hoping to get playing? And how, how did you do? I did very well for our age group, you know. Mm. Yeah, because what age are you? Sure. Back from well, now you've all said that you've, you've got involved and that people were stuck for players. How many of you were on that team that was runner up in the semi final last year? Just four of us. Four of us. Yeah. Four. four of you. Yeah. Now, I want to quote you from a letter that was written uh, some years ago uh, by Sean O'Shea Khan. Uh, it was written to. Uh, Dr. Lockton, and he said, further to your letter, read Ladies Gaelic Football. I would say that my early objections were based on the fact that I wanted our Irish ladies to be ladylike, and I did not regard Gaelic football for them to be a means towards that end, but would in fact tend towards pushing them in the opposite direction. The kernel of my objection, of course, stems from the ruggedness of the game as we know it, and thus the fact that it could result in the breed of muscular, heavy men, Amazons. What's your reaction to that? We've for eight years and now we're muscular. <laughs> <laughs> what is your reaction to that? Do people think that it's not ladylike? Some people do. Like, even for instance, the match, like, you know, the girls in the convent, like, they have to wear their skirts. Like, you know, I think that, you know, that some people do think, like, that football is a kind of game. Like, you know, I don't really know. Another letter. My main worry was the danger of injury, particularly to the breast. I felt that ladies would catch the ball into the chest rather than over their heads, and that this constant trauma from a heavy football might have serious effect on breast tissue, even causing cancer. I would be reluctant to give my own daughter to this as well. Mm -hmm. How about that? Catch the ball while it's coming down the air between the ears. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you, I mean, are people concerned about, about the game as far as like it's all right. For, that's just an excuse. If you want to hand you an excuse, it's a good one to give. All right. But when you're going out to play, you wouldn't get that many knocks. Then, in all honesty. Do you ever play with men? We do. With, not men. The chaps. We get a couple of practice games with the chaps. That's good. Now that you have your moment on television, what would you say to to other women that were thinking of taking it on? Get out and go. <laughs> Definitely. Get somebody, if there's a couple in the air, you get somebody over you and go out and play. should definitely go. Great enjoyment to get a great kick out. Just now, there we go. There we go. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> Marguerite and Assumpta, two observations from that. Uh, we've come an awful long way in, in terms of attitudes uh, and some of the stuff that was mentioned in that piece. Um, 
And second to that, what, what do, can you recall? It was Marion Finucan, um, the late, uh, great Marion Finucan, who conducted that interview. What do you remember of that day, Marguerite? Do you remember, do you remember that being recorded? Oh, yeah, uh, that's a huge day. Um, uh, for our granddad, that was a very secret hospital at the time. But he was telling, he was telling everybody that we're on the, the cameras, television camera were coming to our house that day to take, and they all thought they got cracked like that. Why the television camera would come to our house like? But it was a great day. It was absolutely brilliant day. And I think between the lights and the cameras and all the preparation and all, I think it was a little bit stage fighting my back that day, to be honest. But um, no, it was just a brilliant day. Um, I just think on that, uh, it's nice. To have done it and I think maybe hopefully that we influenced girls to join sport and become part of a team you know in it's great it's a great sport really you know and it was actually the sport was very young at the time hmm. I think in 1977 was, and that was 85 so it was very young at the time so it's kind of promoting football as such yeah, and, you, and some of the teams that you played on were very much trailblazers in that respect. It's something you were so you were just a little girl then. It was uh, when when you look back at when you look, when you look back at that piece, what kind of memories does that bring back for you? Um, when they were asking the questions about like um, maybe girls shouldn't play and all, I was kind of actually looking, going, why shouldn't we play? I, I couldn't understand why there was a barrier there. I didn't realise that. The older sisters had um, started a sport and played a sport that nobody, not every girl in the country got to do it. And just being so young, I just presumed it was normal. I just thought it was actually, everyone got a chance to play football and go every Sunday to support the teams. And yeah, I just was actually shocked when I look back. And I think actually it was so young, like ladies football was only, not even 10 years old at the time. Yeah, but so, some, yeah, but somebody was, somebody was, somebody was, and, and their twin brothers were ever off from day one from the time they to Grasshoppers because that number of huge supporters, very loyal supporters. And and we would have, like, they would have stopped off and in copies of um, Carlock by the bread and Brady's by Brady's hands, right? The whole mentors and everything with teas and coffees and flat, with the flasks and whatever, being the bottle of milk and all that time. So, some of you didn't know any difference because. Every weekend, that's where we were. We were on the road, on support, both I suppose, like underage level and senior level, whatever level it was. But some of from day one, so she thought it was all part of life, like. And Marguerite, who else was in that um, video? It was very much a family affair, obviously. Yeah, the six of us: it Mary, yeah. it was the old Nanan, and then Idel, and then Claire, and some of myself. So there's such a rich tradition. It just it, it was a, it's a lovely place to start, right? To to unearth that kind of footage because you might have seen some of our videos in recent weeks where we're going down memory lane with players who would have represented club and county with distinction right through the years. Um, and you guys have a rich tradition for club and county. Um, so Pat Quill, our former president of the association, has been uh, and a man you know pr particularly well, um, has been uh, doing some digging in terms of the history. Um, of the family um, and obviously it's great to have you on Marguerite and Assumpta today and we really really appreciate your time. Well Shell um club finals in 1996, 1997 and 1999 uh, fortunate to win two of those um, so Assumpta you played in all three of them um, yeah. and Marguerite you played in 97 and 99 but you took a break in 96 for a, a quite a legitimate reason Yes, my son was born in '96, and um, my son was born in '96. And yeah, no, but sure, I did, I did feel I missed out, you know. But then, of course, very rewarding to see the girls doing so well. They did so well, you know. Um, and glad to get back in '97. Yes. So we was captain in '97. We did very well in '97 as well. We stole Bally Bally Mac again. Yeah, there was <laughs> a real. Ourselves. That was a real golden era for your club, or something. Yes, it was because I think it was. Back in uh, 95, was it, where the club nearly folded. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's nearly folded. So for the club to come on over four years and win in All-Ireland, it was amazing. It really was. And to be honest with you, I suppose we were blessed. There was such a, a fabulous group of girls together. You made some great friendships. And not only with your club members, but other team members from other clubs, other counties. So yeah, like 
first achieved so much from a club that nearly fell apart to actually in 96, 97 and 99 to do so well. It yeah, I, but I don't think we realised that when we were playing, you know, because you were out the whole time, you were training between County, Camogie, you were training a lot and sometimes I brought the hurling helmet because I wasn't too sure what I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, yeah, so really we were blessed. We were just yeah. so honoured and blessed to actually achieve so much. But um, that's a bonus. I think sport in itself, just being part of it, is, um, is just so beneficial to people. And especially women, I think it's just brilliant for us to be able to get out for the exercise, to socially, the whole lot. Um, and on the social end of it, I think we used to drive the mentors mad because we love to chat a lot. We were put into separate corners sometimes, like all two. <laughs> we were chatting so much, so uh, God bless the mentors. They were very patient. So, yeah, we were lucky. It was brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant time. Good times. You had great times. Um, so, uh, just some of the club highlights. Uh, so, in... Um, 1996, uh, Shell Maliers against St. Eunan's. It's something you played at number five. So correct me on any of this, but I'm sure when, when Pat Quill has it down, it's all good. Uh, the 1999, the senior club final in 1999, something you were at five. Marguerite, you were sub goalkeeper and sub outfield player. Marguerite, you were only back after a number of years out with a back injury. Yeah, no, yeah. In 97, I. Uh, back injury in 1998. I was back in and out. Actually, I was captain in 1998 in Loughlin County, but I got I was out with a back injury, and Laura Carrigan was the sub co goalkeeper that year. Okay. Uh, or uh, captain, whatever, that year. And uh, yeah, so in and out. But I, I suffered a lot on my back, to be honest, but I was just trying okay. to play. And, yeah, and at that time, it wasn't the same um, physios, and Liz Quill was our physio, which and a fantastic. But not the same um, different devices and all you have now, and you know, for getting injuries back on track or whatever, you know. So we, I suppose, on, in and off, on and off the pitch, I was there to support them anyway, you know. Is everything okay now? No ill effects from that back problem all those yeah. years ago, Marguerite? Uh, it was actually a roll in a club training session that happened with Rita Murphy. I looked for a ball, and Rita was just standing there like a brick wall. So I knew I could read it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's a great player. But, um, yeah, no, I do, I can't stand for very long. You know, I can't okay. stand, I can play, I'm actually have to take up golf now, love playing golf, no effect with that, but I can't stand for any length of time. Okay. I can okay. walk, I can run a little bit, but I can't, yeah. No, it's fine, I played in 99, I was up in 99, but I, you know, it was great. It was absolutely brilliant. After the match, I'd have to put me back up against the wall to cool off for a bit, but after that, prop myself mm. up. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I'm sure the sheer adrenaline would have helped as well with with with, with any niggles at that time, um, Marguerite. So in the replay, some to list at five, you were switched to full back. Some to Marguerite who came on as a sub, scored the equalising point in the first minute of extra time. Uh, so that was an incredibly important score, obviously. Um, Leona added a goal and Aideen Gordon a point all in injury time so obviously First Cousins Orna and Fiona Cullen were subs on that team and also played county football so a little potted history uh, particularly around those two victories uh, ladies then um, at inter-county level Wexford's first All-Ireland senior final in 83 in Kilsheelan Marguerite you were in goal uh, in the first senior final in Crow Park versus Kerry Marguerite you were at number 9 um and in eighty uh, and that was it in terms of the uh Marguerite you played eighty three and eighty six, not eighty nine. Unfortunately when you look through the role of honour, Marguerite at inter county level, um eighty six and eighty seven junior finals and eighty three, eighty six and eighty nine senior finals unfortunately came up short. I mean not, not having one of those victories on, on your CV, and you've, you've both got incredible footballing CVs, is that just a little, a little regret, Marguerite, that you didn't get over the line with, yes. the, with, with the county? Yeah, it's not, it's, a, it's not a little bit of a huge regret, to be honest. Okay. Because it is so, what I'm saying is that we won the league in 1986, we won the league final, the senior league final, which I think, I think we were lacking the confidence, to be honest, Jackie, over the, you know, in the lead up to that sort of, but that gave us, and um, Kerry came to Wexford, we bet them in the uh, league semi final. Okay. And then we got that leash in the final that year in 86. And I think we, had, we were kind of, we thought we could do it, to be honest, in Cup Park. And that was the first year 
that um, Wexford play or uh, the ladies football was allowed into the hollow ground of Folk Park. Um, but it was we had we had a fantastic game. But I always remember that it was a massive pitch. Mm. I'd say I slept for a week after. It was just I think it was the whole <laughs> occasion. And the fact you know you were allowed in on hollow ground, you know, and I think the ladies should be allowed. And even county grounds, we, we don't get the our county finals on county grounds in the Wexford here, which is really unfair. You know, we work, we train as hard as any of the men. We, you know, and I think we should be allowed, you know, have as much of the grounds as we, we own as much as they do, really, you know. We we still have a little road to go in that regard, Marguerite. To be sure, to to, to be sure. But it's something when you look at how far the association has come, you know, you reference um, the, the formation back in nineteen seventy four, and it was still a relatively young organisation. Um, we, we've still come a hell of a long way in, in in a relatively short space of time. Yes, we have in a lot of ways um, with sponsorships and stuff like that. But I think in relation to the attitude of GAA in relation to women a lot of the time, I think it still is very much the boys against the girls, um, which is a pity because they work very well together. When, it, when they're called together, it works for so well together. So it's a pity it doesn't, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more time is, up, is needed. Yeah, we're getting there in fairness because we, we, we had Crow Park for All Ireland semi finals last year as well, and we, we do get the county grounds for the um, for the vast majority of our, our, our earlier round matches as well. So, bit by bit, and the 20 by 20 campaign, Marguerite, how, have you t how do you think that's impacted the overall landscape? Sorry, can you, sorry, Jackie, say it again. Marguerite, the, the 20 by 20 campaign, how do you think that's, over, that's impacted on the, on the overall landscape? She doesn't know what I don't that is. Know. <laughs> it's all. Not... I can't hear you, Jackie. Sorry, can you hear me, Asumta? I can, yes. Okay, sorry, just the, the 20 by 20 campaign, that's campaigning for greater awareness for female sports in this country. Are you aware of it, and how do you think it's, uh, how do you think it's doing? Well, on some fronts, it's, it's making progress. Like, it is making great progress, I think. And with this, um, the sponsorships and everything like that, and the support behind it, it seems to be um, making great strides. But like anything, we'll always ask for a little bit more and it's always good to ask for a little bit more. Absolutely. And I think for women's sports in particular, um, they still don't get the same recognition as the men. Like Katie Taylor, for example, an amazing sportswoman, what she has achieved, uh, etc. If that was a man with half of what she had done, he'd be a, a big a statue of him on the middle of a conference. But I think Katie, yeah. So I think that's an example of where there's a fabulous female sports star who doesn't get the same recognition as she should. She should, you know, she should have it. And for some reason, gender does matter still, which okay. is a pity. Okay, Marguerite. When you look back on your career, and we've we've chatted about various highlights and get and great games that you would have played in. What are the best memories that from from from, from your career? Is there any standout moments that sit above uh, any of the others? Well, I suppose um, the ninety nine All Ireland for me was obviously my first All Ireland, but it was and my last match. In fact, I retired after that game, and um, that has to be the highlight for me. Like we, we just celebrate so much, and we, we I knew well how to celebrate. To be honest, Jackie, uh, as as um, Dave Metcalf said, like you know, we bring the fun back into sport. Extra girls bring the fun back into sport. Girls just used to just out, go out and enjoy yourself was the main thing, I suppose. Another highlight would be, as I said before, the Kerry game in Rexha Park. Yeah. I think we got the best belief, even though even though the management was still in Stilla Hollis and they tried their best to instill a Hollis, we needed to win. And I think we just went in and played our games. We didn't worry about opponents, we just went out and did our best. And you know, I think um yeah, I think that 99 for me, I suppose, is the best. And, I, and actually, I was um, on the management team for a failure team I got her in 2007. We won an All-Ireland final with them. Brilliant. Um, and to be in the B division, but it, it just was absolute. And being in management, and so rewarding to actually be out there and encourage the girls to... I, mean, I didn't realise that people used to look up to me. I didn't realise only, I know, Margaret Cullen or Murphy now, but... You know, it's just, I think it's actually brilliant to have the passion, I suppose, for ladies football, that you can give something back and give it to the young children, like the young girls coming up. And we, 
He played, um, went up to Leach and played, and we won, and it was just absolute, just having my daughter on the team as well. And some great, absolutely brilliant, the likes of Clara, Donnelly, Kelly, Kelly, Carney, they're all on the Kelly team still. You know, they're absolutely fantastic girls. And we just used to go out and have fun. It's mm. all about fun, you know, and that's, it's, it's just to have, it's not all, I think sport for a lot of them has just gone too serious, you know, that they're, you have your um, dietitians, you know, I know that's the way it's gone, Jackie, you know, it's just, it's actually evolving so much. But with the, with the youngsters, it was just, at the time, it was 2007, so it was a bit simpler than now. But I think, that, I think that's what you have to, that we have to do, you have to do all that now to be competitive, competitive, I mean. You know? And Marguerite, you're still obviously follow the fortunes of Wexford um, and how they're doing. I mean, I remember a few years ago um, when Tipperary won the Intermediate All Ireland. I think it was 2017. Uh, some of the toughest games that year, Tip won the league as well that year. Some of the toughest games that they had that year was uh, against Wexford, an incredibly talented Wexford team. Um, obviously, at inter county level, you're still keeping a close eye on on, on how they're doing. Yeah, and um, Sean's on the Kent team still now. Right? Yeah. 17, she's on she's in college. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they're doing fantastic. They're um uh I'm thinking his name now. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> No. Uh, Who's that, Marguerite? Oh, uh, oh, to me. Um the manager last year. Anthony Anthony Masterson. Anthony Masterson, yeah, absolutely did fantastic work. And um, some of the girls now have retired and they are rebuilding to be honest at the minute. But they're, they're getting there and they do it's just it's it's fan, it's just fantastic to work and they put the efforts put in, Jackie. They're working all year round between gym work and you know, they have the, they're all their dietitians and physios and all that. I was well, like they, they get so much so much more um encouragement. Well, we all got encouragement I'm sure, but you know, this it's gone very semi professional, I suppose. Yeah, it's gone to it's gone to a whole new level in terms of preparation. All right, Marguerite. Um, yeah. At, at some time, when you look back on on your playing days, what's the what are the standout moments for you? Um, there's plenty, absolutely plenty, on and off the field. Um, but definitely, um, the St. Union's games they were fabulous. Um, in the in ninety six and ninety seven. Um. There was actually one incident in one of the the games there against them where a um, little trick you pick up through the years. Um, I used to love messing with the players, messing with my own players, you know. And uh, actually one of the St. Union's girls was going through for a goal and I called to her and she passed me the ball. So I was able to uh, take <laughs> which was brilliant. And I have to say, yeah, it was always about fun for me. Um, I didn't take it too serious, whether we weren't won or lost, honestly, to me, it was give it your all on the, the day, play your best, go out and train, do your best, and after that, um, there's nothing else you could do. Uh, Sonta, um, how, how, did that, how, how did that player react when, 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 she, when you got the ball from her? <laughs> I'm not too sure, because I went, yes, <laughs> I was gone. But it was actually a moment where she only had the goalkeeper, and if she had actually scored, they would have won. The, like, there was only one or two points. I can't remember. So, so you, you, actually, you, you, so you were in a situation where you had to think for pretty quickly on your feet. Now, some would call it gamesmanship or, or whatever, but you decided this is what I have to do to stop this happening. Well, I didn't even think about it because I did it in training the whole time. It was just <laughs> something I used to do. But it was the only time I ever worked in a game. I had tried it a few times in a game, but it never worked. But it did that day, and it counted. So um, sometimes those little tricks that you're practicing in training against your teammates and driving them nuts um, does actually work out for you. So <laughs> but, the, yeah, honestly. there there is an old saying: bring it, bring your training ground form onto the pitch on the field of play. So that 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 certainly holds true in that instance. Um, to Marguerite, if I can just go back to the video as well, what was the what was the reaction? Can you remember um, locally when that was aired? Um, what what kind of re reaction did it get? Uh, you know, in the local area, it got great reaction, Jackie. But you know, I don't know. I just think I don't know. I was nineteen at the time, but you know, it was I don't know. I just didn't think anything of it to be honest. It's just one of these things. Like, I don't know. We didn't. Everything was so we were a bit blasé about it to be honest. You know. 
but I think a lot of the influence a lot of girls, you know, a lot in the club especially in the county would have took up the football. You know, friends of mine that would never play before, you know, um, took up the game and it was that was in eighty five. Sure, then we really got going then. Back in 1992, we started, our club got, got going and then County and Kyle got going after 89, after 89, you know, we sort of went downhill, down a little bit, but um, no, I think it's just, I think it was just sort of an influence on everybody, you know. And it's something how... Yeah, I think it's a little bit too, it wasn't like nowadays where you're on Facebook and uh, Snapchat and all that, like... Maybe a lot of people, there was a lot more going on, but people you didn't know about because it wasn't in your face like media is nowadays. You know where it's everywhere. Mm. Um, and actually, I think when that article was circulating back earlier in the year, we actually yeah. got more of a reaction and <laughs> more so from it than probably maybe at the time when it was. Um, and when there. It, yeah, when it yeah. was aired, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's a tremendous piece, and it was. It's lovely to bring it back to back, back to life once again. Um, how are things at club level? Is something? How is the club going these days? Well, unfortunately, I'm after moving parishes now, and um, but. Um, and where are you? Pa- where are you parked up now? Is something? I'm parked up here in the forty now, Davidstown. Okay. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, get involved in that club now in another couple of years. A little one is making her way through the ranks, so, yeah. Very good. Uh, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, but Sherman Air Club is very strong still, very, very strong. strong, and there's a lot of great uh, young players there coming through, and the mentors and stuff that they have. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. The background team is fantastic, Jackie. I have to say, now, in all fairness, in my expert, Pat Quill is, yeah. He's football. He plays football. He's, he's there like from 77. Yeah. He's absolutely, he's, he, he could ask him any question about any game. He has down to the last, down to the last, yeah. Yeah. No, pa- the final week. But the goals before that, beyond that, and everything else, he has it all. You know, I, I don't know, he's an encyclopedia for ladies football. To be honest, you took you the know? words out of my mouth. He really is a, he's an, an, un- he's an unbelievable reference point, and the, the detail that he put into the. The email that he sent on, you know, and, and I'm looking through it. Um, Margaret, Edel, Mary Ann. I mean, it was very much a family affair, Marguerite. How special was that? That it was so many involved in so many great days. I think that we were so lucky. There's 11 of us in our family, and there's six girls, and six girls actually all were totally in football. We all played club and county. And I think we're really, we're really, we're really fortunate people. But as well as that, I think. The friends we met, our friends we made, and, and the club mates we have, we're like a big family. You know, we, there's a lot of um, sisters, like our, our cousins are in the other club. Yeah. It's, the, it's their mom that actually encouraged me to play. Wow. It would have been fun for us, for, the four of us, and then yeah. Sonny and Claire came on long after. But they, she was, Mary, and Mary, she was a fantastic lady. And when the club formed originally, of course, we're looking for girls to play. and it must have been so, a, such a fun house to grow up in at Sumter. So busy and so much activity. Very busy and it was great. If you ever fell out with someone, there was always someone else to play with. So, um, but yeah, I do remember out in the fields uh, when the, the hay would be cut, everybody, you'd have a good crowd out playing, hurling in the field, um, probably a couple of neighbours, a few cousins over. It was always a, a bunch of people around. Um, but as a player playing with your siblings, it is very different. You seem to home in on them. I remember I was very blessed to be able to play with Marguerite and Claire in, I, I think it was in 97. And I just remember thinking, anytime I needed to pass the ball, there was always one of them there. Whether there's a something there with siblings or not, yeah. I don't know. But just it, instinct, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. It was yeah. really lovely. And even... The aftermath of the celebrations or the, the commiserations, depending on it, it was lovely. It was really great to just be able to experience that with family members. And then, to be honest with you, Jackie, we didn't talk a whole lot about it in the home afterwards. Um, Left on the beach. We did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it used to be a shock to me sometimes. I'd be in a friend's car and their family would analyse the whole thing. And I'd be like, oh, God, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> um, it was great. It didn't matter if you played well or didn't play well. It was left on the field and you got on with life and did whatever was to be expected of the rest of that day or the next day and then go back training that week. 
Yeah, every day of the week. It's brilliant. Yeah, so I think we're I think we're just there's so much we just were getting so much sport, Jackie, that that you know, to be honest, it was just we had enough on the pitch, sort of or we're going to train or whatever. We you know that's it, we had enough. You know, obviously it's a big occasion we've been chatting about maybe before and after. But like we you wouldn't no, we didn't analyze it an awful lot to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it was analyzed enough. It was analyzed enough on the pitch, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, folks, how are you both um, getting through lockdown? Um, strange times, and I know I ask this question to everybody that comes on. How are you finding it all? I mean, we seem to have some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of getting back playing a bit of club and, and hopefully inter-county later on in the year, but how have you found this just as a life experience these last few months? Well, for me, anyway, Jackie, I have to say I've embraced it. Um, found the first couple of days a bit strange, a bit long, um, and you'd have a kind of more emotional time, like maybe of like yeah, absolutely. Um, the fear factor. And but I think once I stopped watching the news and following yeah. what was on the internet and Donald Trump and everything, actually I was in the garden and um, just you kind of get in a cocoon at home and you just actually find your own rhythm to life. And to be honest with you, it's not a bad rhythm, it's very slow. Very easy. You lie down when you want to. You get up when you want to. Yeah, you um, when you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, Jackie. Yeah, we're blessed. Everyone is safe. Everyone Good. is okay. And as far as I'm concerned, yeah, as long as it stays that way, yeah, let be so. Yeah, I'm, 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 just, I'm more or less the same. When my husband works in the hospital, so he's front line worker. But I was a little bit nervous. I was nervous to be honest of that. But I think to be honest, it's been. It's not worth saying, but great because everyone's time to listen just to be and not to be fussing. This, if this this time any other year, you'd be on the road all the time. Yeah, every time just breathe and relax. And I'm glad this, I'm glad actually I'm back playing golf. How is your golf, Margaret? Pardon? How is your golf? Are you going okay? I'm only a newbie, Jackie. <laughs> so, so what. Uh, uh, what, what, do you have a handicap or what are you playing off? Very handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. I'm 32, but I'm only starting, so I don't. Ah, yeah, you, yeah, you'll get up to it. You, you'll, you'll get better and better. As, as, do, you, do, you, do you feel, having taken up the sport, a different sport like that, Marguerite, that you have a little bit of a knack or a flair for it, or is it something that you're going to have to devote a lot of time to? I, play, I played sort of left hand in, in Komogi, so it actually suits me lovely. Um, yeah, no, I love it. It's just when you get out, you have those four hours, three and a half, four hours, whatever it is, and you just don't think of anything. So I'm glad to have that, you know, to think yeah. you can have that through this COVID time anyway, you know. I think people need to get out to have a bit of time to yourself too, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't play the course. I don't play against anyone. You know, you're obviously just playing the course. It's not a team sport. It's fantastic. You know, that you can, it's not like a team sport, you know, that sort of a way. It's just, yeah, it's a great sport. Good for good for the head and good for the brain and good for the mind and that's what we're all about. That's what we're all about, ladies. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to to uh, chat to you today. Um, it's uh, it's it's some step back in time, isn't it? When you look back at that video again, it's just incredible. I'm sure all the memories came rushing back for you. Um, uh, Mark Reed Cullen and Sumter Cullen, great talking to you. Um, and hope, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see you on the other side of, uh, of COVID-19 and the pandemic and when life gets back to normality and we'll catch up in the not too distant future what I'm going to do I'm going to end the meeting for myself here and um, we'll chat to you again real soon and thanks for coming on today thanks Jackie thanks very much bye bye take care